explosions, gunfire. But our convoy was hit by a roadside bomb. These are scenes from Richard Engel's tenure as a correspondent in Iraq. If you're there long enough, you will be in an IED attack, and you will, if you covered it for an extended period of time during, uh, during 2005 to 2007, there was a serious kidnapping threat. Uh, so uh, it just is a factor of math. While U.S. forces were securing the site... Engel is one of the few American journalists to have covered Iraq continuously, before, during, and after the U.S.-led invasion. Since 2003, 130 members of the news media have been killed in Iraq. Most of them were Iraqis. The Committee to Protect Journalists says the Iraqi conflict has been one of the most dangerous journalists have ever covered. I think I've been very fortunate. Uh, some of my colleagues have been killed, and more reporters have been killed covering the war in Iraq than any conflict in modern history. So it has been exceptionally dangerous because we haven't been with the troops very much. We've been living on our own, just moving around Baghdad, asking questions. There is still a lot of fire coming at us. Some of it is exploding. Engel says the war in Iraq has forced journalists to be more resourceful in gathering the news. Some people wear disguises. I, I have print reporter friends uh, who d take a, an approach of camouflage. They'll, women will wear the traditional Arab uh, dress, a black, uh, black robe. And I have a friend, she's a blonde woman with blue, blue eyes. She covers her hair and puts brown, brown contact lenses in and goes around and hopes no one will notice her. Some news organizations have recalled their reporters and shut down their Iraq bureaus, mostly because of safety issues and because of the high price of providing security. Engel's office, the NBC bureau in Baghdad, was bombed twice. At one point, Engel traveled everywhere with armed guards and was able to survive without being kidnapped or landing in a hospital with shrapnel wounds. He says the job has become somewhat easier because violence in the country is down significantly since the U.S. troop surge last year. But he says Iraq is still a place where a Westerner is a target. As soon as we take out our cameras, everyone notices we're there. So it's a, a bit of a, a game of, of hide-and-seek, where we're out there and, and hopefully trying to get our, uh, get our stories out before anyone notices we're there. Covering wars in Iraq and also in Lebanon has taken its toll on Angle. Some of the bodies have been brought here, just wrapped in plastic, taped shut with packaging tape. You can see their faces through the plastic. They'll be buried later. In his new book, War Journal, he recalls how the stress and danger of his work ruined his marriage and how questions about his safety were a constant concern at NBC. Engel says the ups and downs of the Iraqi people are similar to the emotional roller coaster he was on. So as their experience from the fall of Saddam to a period of hope, to a period of darkness, to a period of in, in, uh, uncertainty, I, I've gone through that same, same uh, emotional spectrum. The war in Iraq is now in its sixth year. More than 4,000 U.S. troops have died in combat. Close to 100,000 Iraqi civilians are said to have died from sectarian and other violence. The U.S. TV networks are focusing more now on the U.S. presidential race and the teetering economy. But Richard Engel, now based in Beirut, Lebanon, predicts that Iraq will continue to make headlines. Iraq is going to be a major part of foreign news going forward. So if I'm serious about covering foreign stories, and I am, and NBC is committed to covering foreign stories, then we're going to continue to cover Iraq as part of it. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago. The director of this orphanage says what they miss most is tenderness, their mother's touch.